the Game Changers versus Food Lies. The battle of the documentaries has begun, and this beef just got personal. Yeah, that's what I said. James Wilkes has recently come under fire for eating what appears to be mostly processed junk food, vegan junk food. Now, you might not like what I'm about to show you, but Brian Sanders, the man behind the Food Lies documentary, recently scrolled back through James Wilkes' wife's Instagram profile and took screenshots of all of her grocery hauls and the food that she was showing on her Instagram. This story got picked up by Mike Mutzel, who runs High Intensity Health, a larger keto slash carnivore channel here on YouTube, and he published a video today going in on James Wilkes over this vegan junk food. So let's see what High Intensity Health had to say. So you would think that in his household, if he spent that much time studying nutrition, that just through sheer osmosis, that maybe his wife would have picked up on some of the you know, some of the things that he learned about through all this study. And it seems that based upon some of the pictures, vegan donuts, imitation meats that are just crap, ton of bread, orange juice, uh, I mean, just processed applesauce, it was, it was garbage. Totally garbage, okay? High Intensity Health went in on James Wilkes with no Vaseline. In fact, I'd be surprised if this video stays up. So I'm not gonna show you the whole video, but we're gonna have to look at some of these clips and see what's going on here because this is pretty controversial and this is getting personal. This is the food seemingly they're feeding their children. One would think that if you spent thousands of hours or over a thousand hours studying nutrition and you knew all this stuff about the body that you would eat better food. I, I just, that's just what I would suspect. So don't be judging. you got to be congruent in life. If you're going to be in a position where people are looking up to you and looking up to your information, you have to lead by example. That's why I fast. Part of it is I want to lead by example. I, I should be able to fast. If I can't fast, why can I? I shouldn't be able to talk about fasting. Don't you think congruence is a valid point of contention here? Meaning you should practice what you preach, or at least relatively close to it. Now, keep watching, guys, because this is where it gets really interesting. You know, to be honest with you, uh, I haven't really shared this before, but this is why I didn't jump on the whole carnivor carnivorous diet bandwagon initially because I was following the carnivore diet hashtags on Instagram and I was so disappointed because a lot of people that were going carnivore, they were taking pictures of themselves eating fast food but just taking the bun off and taking the lettuce off the bun, but still going to Burger King and McDonald's. So if we're gonna talk about congruence, the thing is that high intensity health did eventually come around to the so-called carnivore bandwagon, and he did eventually have Dr. Sean Baker on his podcast, where Dr. Baker admitted there's no difference between grain-fed and grass-finished beef. And, and honestly, at the end of the day, I mean, of the studies that have been done, Texas A&M University did a study, I think, in around 2010, where they looked at ground beef that was either grain-fed or grass-finished, looked at some biomarkers, really no real significant difference between the two. I think, in fact, the grain-fed had a slightly greater improvement in HDL, and we can argue whether that even means anything or not, probably is, is, is no significant difference. And, and that's been the clinical experience and people that I've seen. We need to get rid of fast food entirely, not just take the bun off. Taking the bun off is a little baby step. Look, I did that in my sophomore year in high school. I started taking the buns off the burgers. On top of that, it's not like I'm exaggerating when I say that Dr. Sean Baker has literally promoted fast food without the bun. Here's a picture of him on Twitter promoting eating 22 in and out hamburger patties with no bun. Must be the bun, guys. Influencers of certain diets should certainly not be promoting eating at fast food restaurants. I think most of us would probably agree with him that influencers should not be going around promoting fast food. But Mike, you had Dr. Ken Berry on your channel and Dr. Ken Berry promotes conventionally raised animals and fast food. They might have a little added something injected, that's totally true. They might have a little preservative or a little of this or that, that's true. But you definitely want to get the highest fat 
ground beef, the cheapest ground beef you can find. Might it have some preservatives? Yes. Might it have some added fillers or whatever? Yes, it might have that. You can't make this stuff up, guys. Here's Dr. Ken Berry on Twitter promoting McDonald's hamburger patties, saying they're 1,000 times healthier than an organic granola bar. And I think this takes us to the idea of perfection in your diet. None of us have perfect diets, guys. It doesn't matter if you're doing keto or if you're doing vegan. None of our diets are perfect and we're busy people. The onus is on you, James. The onus is on you, vegans, because I think I have nothing wrong with people eating a whole food vegan diet. The challenge is, is very few people eat a whole food vegan diet. We're gonna talk some more about perfectionism and nutritionism and how that can hamper you regardless of what diet you're on. But first, I think it's interesting that Mike doesn't have any problem with somebody eating a perfect whole foods plant-based diet. And yet this kind of reminds me of the type of criticism that people are comfortable dishing out but not taking. And I noticed this one time about a year ago before my channel even had many subscribers when I was watching a Jason Whitrock vlog Paxton is eating chicken nuggets with fruit. An interesting thing I've noticed about Paxton over the year and a half that he's been born, uh, we started him off with meats and uh, he really loved ground beef, you know, bacon, sausage, things like that. And then we started introducing sugar because I have to admit, it's almost impossible to keep sugar away from children. It's absolutely everywhere. Respect to Jason for recognizing that there's no such thing as perfection when you're talking about raising a family or having people around you that you want to influence with your own healthy choices. That being said, there might be a thing or two that you hear or see that doesn't sound quite right. Fruit is a sugar, fructose. And I've noticed that whenever we feed Paxton, he goes right for the fruit. He has literally trained himself to seek out the sugar. So my wife literally has to hide the fruit every time we feed him, because if he sees it, he won't eat his meat, he won't eat his protein, he will refuse until he gets his sugar first. And our knee-jerk reaction might be to criticize somebody or say that we don't approve of how they're doing it. And I understand that. I've done that myself and regretted it in the past on, on YouTube before I got real big. And this led to a controversy with, with Jason where I said something about this exact clip right here and then he went into this whole thing about how he got attacked by vegans. And I was, I was surprised. Unfortunately, very recently I've come under attack by vegans and the vegan communities. Before I begin, I wanna make it very, very clear that I will not tolerate personal attacks on me and especially attacks towards my wife and my son just because I follow a specific diet does not give you a license to attack my family. Now in its totality, Jason's response to my novice and knee jerk criticism from way back was actually very well measured and he took it well and moved on. And I think that's the best solution in a case like this. If somebody's going to criticize your diet or what you're feeding your kids, that's you borderline personal beef there and I, I've learned my lesson not going there anymore. Attacking other people and their diets is actually the height of insecurity. Learned my lesson from Primal Edge Health with that, just talking about stuff that I had seen that looked, looked like very strange to me in the keto community. I'm like, why are people talking and acting like this? And yet there it is. <laughs> oh, you want some? What is it? Butter and colostrum. Butter and colostrum. Yes. Wow. So how do you let's yeah, show you that? Uh -huh. If I leave it up to you, we'll be broke. It's delicious. <laughs> but that being said, it's not my place to tell somebody how to raise their kids or necessarily even pass some sort of knee-jerk reaction to just seeing something that I don't understand or seems weird to me. But that's just how it is on the internet nowadays and we're seeing it. We're seeing it develop right here with this food lies versus the game changers beef that's starting to play out. Uh, I have nothing, there's, I don't think anyone would criticize or complain or make fun or poke fun and they don't, a vegan's eating real food. I mean, if you're eating 
sprouted and soaked nuts and seeds and preparing things in a traditional manner and supplementing with vitamin B12 and different you know micronutrients that could be lacking or will be lacking from your diet, no one cares about that. So I don't know about y'all, but nobody that I know is eating a perfect real foods, 100% whole foods diet that deserves zero criticism. And to be honest, man, it seems like you kind of contradicted yourself there. You said you wouldn't criticize a well-planned vegan diet, and then at the same time, you're like, oh, but you, you will get deficiencies, and you'll supplement and these things. And it's like, dude, you sell supplements. As far as I can tell, it looks like you have developed your own supplement line. If I go to your website and click on the supplements page, it takes me to a whole proprietary supplement sales funnel on your site with videos and testimonials, all of that stuff. And so I'm just saying, man, if you're gonna criticize a vegan diet for being inherently deficient, then why did you develop all sorts of supplements specifically for correcting deficiencies on a ketogenic diet? Not to poke holes at James and or his wife and his family, but I want you to realize that this is what the people behind the film actually eat, and it's complete garbage. And so it, it really should make you kind of question some of the information that it was conveyed in that film. Because I, I just it makes me question a lot. So you're not here to poke holes at James Wilkes and his family, yet you tell him that they're eating garbage when really you don't know what they're eating on a regular basis because his wife put a picture up of some vegan donuts? Come on, man. You think that they're eating that every single day? What a joke, man. And dude, you literally have a video about exposing the lies of, or the BS of the game changers. So how are you gonna sit here and say you're not trying to poke holes at the film or at this person? This, the whole film hurts your business. That's what this is about, man. That's what people don't understand, is that this movie hurts your bottom line. If I get carved up and start eating lots of vegetables, I don't need your MCT oil supplement. Not so good for your business, is it? Hmm, see how that works? So this is where I wanna just kinda shift my weight around and show you guys that I don't think necessarily the people in the keto community would even respond well to this kind of criticism if it was directed at them. And so it's, is it okay to, to see it come back on the vegan people and now these deficient vegans are just eating junk food? And it's like, dude, I'm pretty sure that uh, he is definitely still performing at an athletic level and doing his thing while he's touring the country, running running game on this film, and what what's the deal, man? Is that what time it is that we we we're gonna just sit back and not respond to criticism? This is this could potentially bring a personal beef, you know, bringing this kind of stuff up and trying to wave it in people's faces when you're talking about somebody's family, and don't act like it couldn't because I might have just in passing mentioned something that I've seen on YouTube. And then all of a sudden people are like, I was attacked by vegans. We were attacked. Oh no, they're so militant. Because there's people out here that are trying to help each other with good diets. And I think that's what your goal is. And I think that's what James's goal is. And so you're gonna sit here and say that that hurts the claims of the film? That what you saw in a grocery shopping cart or a, a vegan donut box on an Instagram post hurts the film now? Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to wrap it up there. Now, and what I wanna say is that I definitely did a realistic what I eat in a day video, and I ate a bagel. Hmm, that, yeah, that's bad, man. That's so bad. You ate a bagel, oh, uh, that's not Whole Foods. Cancel red pill vegan. All right, y'all know what time it is. Red pill vegan. Next.